All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is Don Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Isaac Ho, who is up in Washington State. How are you doing, Isaac? I'm doing well, John. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, and Isaac is a master sales coach, six-figure business owner, and re regarded health expert and dad, and you help growth-oriented entrepreneurs and business owners overcome that nasty feeling of never being good enough and the overwhelm of their current um, but outdated business model. So what we're going to talk about today is rules you need to break to get to that six or seven-figure business. So um, Isaac, uh, let's get straight into it. Um, what are some of the rules that we are all abiding by that we need to stop or we need to break or we need to do differently? Yeah. Yeah. The first one for me, when I, a little bit about my background is I had a, a health and fitness gym. And so my first business coach that I hired gave me a certain model. And so the first rule we have to really ask ourselves is where did the model that we use for business in terms of making income, where did that come from? So if we have a model that's based off for example, very traditional for employees, an hourly rate. So like I work mm -hmm. with you and this is how much money I make per hour. Then we're always using that model to actually price and create our programs. So being really curious about, am I using a model that's not actually serving me or giving me the outcome that I want? So that would be one of the first big pieces that I had to. And when I learned that, that's what took me in my business from charging about 200 and 225 an hour to having 16K, 30K, 60K clients. Yeah. And no, it's it's interesting because I do think that's a lot of how people come up with the pricing for their business, as you said, is that they look at their costs. I mean, clearly, I mean, you have to look at your costs, look at your employee costs, look at all the other overheads, and then you say, okay, I want to get X margin or something. So I'll I'll put that on top. And it's kind of a it's it's kind of a backwards model, really, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's really just it's it's archaic and then what it ends up having us be in is being burnt out and fatigued in our own business. And then I often see clients will come to me and they'll tell me like they even resent their work because of how burnt out they are, because they don't have the lifestyle and freedom or the impact that a lot of people become entrepreneurs to make. Yeah. And then a lot of, and then let's face it, a lot of pricing, uh, pricing your product or service is looking at what other people are charging and sort of going, okay, that kind of feels like where I should be. Yeah, man, I, I love that you brought that up, John, because it's it's one of the biggest things. It's like, what is the other person charging? So I can I can kind of be in the same ballpark. But one of the things that I teach my clients to realize is by pricing yourself the same as everyone else, you're actually saying that you're just average. Yeah, and I think that's a really important it's a really important point. And I think a lot of it then goes back to, and you probably have this when you work with your clients, is it kind of boils down at the end of the day is to how much you value yourself and how much you value the service or, or product that you're offering. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's hundred percent it. I guess the question we have to ask ourselves is do I love myself enough to ask for what I really want to make? Right. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so, what's what's one of the what's one of the next rules that we should be looking at? Turning yeah. Over breaking. Yeah, it's actually funny. One of the ones that that you alluded to is is one of the rules is pricing yourself based off what everyone else is pricing themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that, that, that's a good one. Um, and and like I said, I mean, it's a trap that lots of people fall into. And but at the end of the day, I think when you have when you have a really good product or service and you're confident in it, uh, you know, people, ex people expect to pay premium for premium service. Mm. Yeah. Like people are definitely willing to invest and um, you know, it's, it's, it's really about understanding part of it. You know, a large part of the work that I help clients with is as a sales coach. And so, mm. You know, one of the, I would say the third big rule that we have to break in order to have a seven figure business or multiple six figure business is we have to stop believing that it's hard <laughs> because if we believe it's hard, we create that it's hard. And one of the ways we make sales really hard for ourselves is we actually try to tell the person why we're worth the premium. Yeah, I think that's an excellent point. Uh, and yes, I, I think that I think that's that's a that's a very fundamental one for people to take away. That if you do believe it's hard, um, then it will be hard. Uh, but also on top of that, you kind of give yourself a bit of a get out of jail card, don't you? You go, 
Oh, well, you know, I'm not doing so well, but it's really hard. It's a hard, I'm in a hard business. It's, 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 a, it's a hard climate right now, the economy. I mean, you can find a thousand things to give yourself a get out of jail card if you, if you think, if you start off with that mindset that it's hard. Right. Yeah. I totally did that when I um, hired one of the sales coaches that trained me. You know, I was selling my sessions at 225 and I found out this, mm -hmm. um, this guy that I had talked to that I'd known, he was a fitness coach as well. Then I found out, John, that he's selling 10K programs. <laughs> and I went, what? I'm selling 200. And I went, man, like my product, my service, my results, I know are really good. So why is he selling 10K and I'm selling, you know, 225? Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of it was my belief. And so even though I had all these skill sets, I wasn't being compensated for them. Yeah. So how did you, how did you personally, how did you transition your mindset into going, hang on a second, I am, I am worth this. I am valuable in what I'm doing. I should be able to charge a premium. Yeah. What I was doing is I actually had a belief that people, um, people saying yes or no to my price was about me. And so right. what I kept looking for, like, what do I need to do to make them see the value? And the thing that I learned that I teach my clients that's helped them and helped me, you know, move into having five figure programs is that them saying yes or no is really about them. It's about if they're willing to release the energy around the result they want. And if you come from a place of this is about them, then you show up differently to the sales conversation. And as long as you're coming from that old place of this is about me, you can't fully be in service in the sales conversation. And that's the thing that stops people from getting five figure programs. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, uh, and I think that's, the, that's the, that's the key point is that, is that the decision is more about them and, and it may not suit them. You know, you may not be the right fit for them, but, uh, but certainly if you're underselling yourself, you're not doing, you're not doing anybody any favors, but uh, so, so part of that, when you started to believe, okay, um, I am good at what I do. I, I offer a really good service. I get great results. What was it like the first couple of times then when you when you decided, okay, I'm going to charge a lot more? Yeah, well, this is a, I love that you asked that question, John. There's this uh, experience I had where I came back, decided what my high ticket offer was going to be, and I went from selling you know 225 an hour to 18,500. So I got back from Rochester, New York, where I created this program. Within four days, I got an $18,000 paid in full. And that changed my life because I went from being a guy who was stuck in an hourly, having a business that, you know, gym businesses, personal training businesses, you can have a great product, but if someone drives by, they go, there's five gyms. So why would I pay you 18,500 for six months? Mm. Right. So once I learned that skill set, it really challenged my belief about what else was possible. And that's how I really became like, aware. And what happened inside of me, I realized one of the things that was first priority is once I decided I was going to invest with the coach that I hired, which was for 60,000 a year, that's what I paid mm -hmm. him. Um, when I got back, John, I found out the home that I was living in, I was getting kicked out in 30 days. So I didn't have a place to live. Now I owed this guy 5k a month that I'd committed to. And the solution that was brought to me was to charge 18,000. And in that moment, John, I knew in my mindset that if I went back to my comfort zone of charging 225, I would be stuck forever. I would be stuck forever. So yeah. every sales call I got on, I went, I'm going to offer this program. And in four days, somebody bought it. And so what was required for me is to see the universe had brought me the incentive and I had to show up. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a great story. And, and what did it? Uh, and when the first the first call you made trying to sell the you know the eighteen grand program or whatever, how did that feel to you when you first sort of went on and said, okay, this is the first one. I'm gonna I'm gonna put this price out there. Yeah, man. Um, well, because I work a lot in mindset, the training I got was mm -hmm. the mindset. So I didn't just go. I've got an eighteen thousand dollar program now. You should buy it. <laughs> like some people do, I'm just going to raise my rate. So I'll just add extra zeros, but that's not how, that's not how high ticket sales work. So what I started with was going through this process where I really went based off my 10 years in health, like what do people actually need to succeed? Am I, am I selling what I think people need or am I selling what they, what I think they'll buy? And I realized I was selling what people bought. And so the awareness I got was realizing that I was actually being selfish in my sales process. 
So even though I had all this strategy and I went, yeah, it's going to help. They're going to do something. Cause I was, I was making the decision to sell out of safety for myself, hoping I would get the money to keep on living the life that I was used to. And what I wasn't doing was creating a program that they really need to succeed. And that was the big shift that I made, John, was from a mindset standpoint is realizing what I felt like people really needed, what the value it was, and then actually showing up and, and knowing some key things about how the mind works when it comes to sales. So that person can say yes to the program, you know, and they, and they pay and then they thank me. And actually, you know, really interesting. Like I just had a coaching session with that client that hired me for 18 K per month. He's been my client now for over three years. Right. So if you just do the math on that, you know, that one sale, 70 a year or eight, 36 a year, you know, it's about a hundred K mm-hmm. and, uh, and he thanks me on our calls. And that's, that was the, the big difference is I actually learned how to come from service with my programs. Yeah. And I love it. I'm, I'm really glad that you outlined that story because often people talk about the concept of, of coming from a place of service, but sometimes it's a little bit nebulous or, or vague. Um, but what you've outlined yeah. there um, exactly that is that you you reoriented everything and you said, OK, what do these people need as opposed to I've put something together that I think is really cool and I think they need it. Switching, switching over to to uh, configuring your product product or service and then reaching out and then look looking at it from their point of view and from the value it will create from them. I mean, and that, that's where the service element comes in. Yeah, 100 percent. And it's so powerful when we make that yeah. change. Absolutely. Sure and and uh, what are some of the other rules that uh, we should consider breaking? Yeah, so one is just our money rules. So it's really hard to get somebody to invest into us when we won't invest into us. <laughs> and so one of the things is like if, if this is something that came up for me is I realized like, wow, like I'd never hired a 60K coach. And I remember getting off that call. And he asked me, what's different about this call? And I went, no one's ever asked me for $60,000 before. And I went, the confidence you have to have to stand there and ask someone for that. And you know, it's not a coincidence that three years later, that's my fee. And I get that. But you can't navigate someone through what you haven't done yourself. And so one of our biggest money rules we have to overcome is being willing to give ourselves what we really want. We have to release the energy around that. And that can be the the coaching, it can be the vacation, it can be the lifestyle, it can be the health, you know, like I have a client who um, owns very successful plumbing business, service business, but doesn't, doesn't have the health he wants. And, you know, he came to me and he said, um, I have all these other things in my life. This is the one area that's not a 10 for me. And I asked him, have you released energy around it? Like, have you actually released money around it? Because you've bought coaches in other areas. And he realized that he hadn't. And that's why he was still stuck. And so releasing the energy and understanding how that release of energy works, being able to help them understand your potential clients, that's really necessary. And we have to start by breaking that rule for ourselves. Yeah, and I think that's a great, great point again, uh, Isaac, is because I do think that it's it's a funny thing. And I, and I talk and I mentioned this a lot, so I apologize to people who've heard me pontificate on this uh, before. But it's like, you know, we, to your point, though, we will invest money in lots of things. We'll invest in our hobbies. We'll invest in other things, right? But we're very reluctant to invest money in ourselves, in the job, in the profession, in the thing that actually puts bread on the table. Like, to your point, like, you you hired yourself a coach. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of people in job sales, people, other people sit around and say, well, my company never trains me. And you go, well, you know, why don't you train yourself? Why don't you invest in yourself? Because nobody's going to care as much about you as you do. And I guarantee you, you're investing money in other areas that don't put bread on your table. Right. And I love that you shared that. I, you know, I have a client of mine that we worked on developing himself. He was in corporate tech. And what happened is they actually restructured the company and he lost his job. And because we had done work together and he'd invested in himself, he applied for the next level up in that job, the same job that his director, his old boss applied for. And he got the job and his director didn't. So he had actually outgrown his boss. So when the opportunity came, he actually got that role. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a great, great example right there. And I think the other thing when you talk about, uh, you know, relationship to money, because I think this is where 
Um, I've talked to a, a lot of people and a lot of these limiting beliefs, you know, come from your background, you know, how, what was money like when you were a kid with your family, you know, do, do you carry any residual uh, issues around money that maybe you're not aware of, but that you always are in a place of scarcity as opposed to a place of abundance? Yeah, but that, that was huge for me. Like growing up from my family, John, we, we would spend money on things that made sense, but not things that brought us joy. So like, I remember sitting here, it's like, okay, I'm putting money into my retirement. I'm, I'm making money, but I'm mm -hmm. still driving this old Acura that I got. And I always wanted this muscle car. And I went, well, it's the pandemic. I don't really drive that off. I, I go to my gym once a week, work out with my friends. Why do I need to spend 45,000 on a car? And then I realized it wasn't about the car. It was about my willingness to give and love myself enough. And I'll tell you, when I bought that car, all my excuses about not driving it went away because I loved that car so much. I drove it just to drive it. So right, like the right. story I had, you know, about giving myself that thing, it's like, man, that was huge for me, you know? And um, sometimes for money, it's like, we always have our own rules around it. But for me, one of the things that I found and for my clients is like, we have the business, but like, are we actually having what we say we built the business for? The lifestyle, the time, the freedom, the health. What I found is a lot of people, they never gave that to themselves growing up. So just because the external situation changes doesn't mean that they start giving it to themselves. Yeah, no, I agree with you. And I think that's one of the hardest things is for some people is, you know, maybe because of the background, maybe your experience growing up, but but um, rewarding ourselves, why we say that's what we want and we want to do all this, when it comes to it, we're kind of reluctant because again, we don't, and I think it comes back to that, feel, we feel unworthy of having the things that we say we want. Yeah, that's, that, that's completely it. And, you know, one of the things, like as a man, you know, talking to you as another man, it's like I always used to be afraid of hitting that midlife crisis where I start doing crazy things. I don't know if you ever felt like, oh, he's got the, the wild clothes and he's got the wild car and he needs the young woman. And I realized like that really comes from a place of not having given to yourself for 50 years. And then you hit mortality and you're freaked mm -hmm. out and you go, this is my, my last shot to experience all these things I didn't give to myself. But the real solution was to give to yourself 30 years ago. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great point. It's a great point. And um, yeah, or just be kind of immature like I was and just go and play around for as long as you can and then retire. <laughs> so I don't have to worry about midlife crises. So um, I'm, I'm quite enjoying <laughs> enjoying midlife and beyond. But but it's a great point, though. That is a great point is that is is that we tend to postpone everything. Right. Everything is uh, I think um, there's a quote, I mean, my dad used to say this to, God rest him, used to say to me, and I, I can't remember where the quote came from, maybe it was James Joyce or something, but it was about living at arm's length from yourself. And that means that you're never in the present, you're always at an arm's length, you're all either looking at the past or you're looking at the future. And, and we often could have set up and say, okay, if this, this and this happen, then I'll be happy, or mm -hmm. then I'll reward myself or whatever. And those, of course, all of them never happen because of the way you've set up the construct in your mind in the first place. Right. Yeah. It's just a imaginary rule. So one day yeah. you can tease yourself with that carrot. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess, I mean, it's what great about your story is that when you climbed into your car for the first time, you had a completely different experience than you know, climbing into cars previously or whatever, because as you said, it wasn't about the car. It was about, it was about everything. It, it, the car kind of represents something. Exactly. Yeah. I represented my rules about saying like I was worthy. You know, cause most of us, it's like, Hey, as an entrepreneur, you can find $400 a month to make yourself happy. So the real question is like, what are you telling yourself that that money is supposed to bring you? Because if it was going to bring you that, well, the money's in your account, so you would have it. <laughs> so learning, learning to break the rules is, and that's why, you know, I love that you asked me this question about rules because the rules don't just apply for being an entrepreneur and making money. They, they apply for being a dad. They apply for being healthy. They apply for having healthy relationships because we have rules. I remember like with my wife, the big thing is we grew up with just such different backgrounds, John, that when I would communicate with her about what I thought money should be spent on what her roles were it's like we couldn't see eye to eye at all mm. and I had to change those rules in order to have a healthy relationship and um man if I didn't 
you know, I wouldn't, wouldn't have the son that I do now, wouldn't have the family that I do now. So learning to break rules is a skill set and uh, it serves us in all areas. Yeah, yeah, no, I love that. It's a great story. I love that. And, uh, you know, being from Ireland and having married, uh, having married someone from California, I know all about uh, putting two completely different cultures together. <laughs> but, but, but you get something better. That's what I say at the end of the day. You combine two great things, you get something even better. Well, listen, Isaac, this has been fantastic. So listen, all of Isaac's information is going to be below this video. Uh, but before we go, Isaac, please do tell people a little bit more about you and your business. Yeah, I help six-figure entrepreneurs overcome feeling plateaued and burnt out so they can have the ultimate lifestyle, freedom, and health. And if you like to connect, you can text me at, you can text the word AND, A-N-D, at 66866. And we have a conversation about the, what what you need to do to excel in your business, health, and life instead of just one area because we need all of these to work together. And in order to do that, we have to understand what our rules are. Yeah, absolutely. And then figure out what is your muscle car? That's right. <laughs> and what color is your muscle what, car? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah, I feel like there's a whole psychology in there somewhere. But anyway, we'll leave that for another day. Um, listen, thanks again, Isaac. Thank you all for watching and listening. And I will talk to you all again very soon. Thank you.